Don't call a narcissist out when you have finally worked out that you're dealing with a narcissist. Don't argue, don't fight, don't let them know you know would be my best advice. And I would like to get into this now to give some clarity around why that advice, in my opinion, is the best when you're dealing with a narcissist or someone who has narcissistic personality disorder. So here's the scenario, guys, you're, you know, you're getting these light bulb moments, you're, you've got this information, you've Googled who the person is with, just dumped, discarded, cruel, and you've come up with narcissist and you're getting the education and there's flashes going on all over the place in relation to they did that, they did that, they did, they followed exactly that pattern. You look up the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistics Manual, and the person that you were dealing with meets five of the nine criteria for narcissistic personality disorder. And nobody here is saying that we can diagnose any other person, but you will never get or very rarely get a narcissist to go to see a psychiatrist or someone who is qualified to give them a formal diagnosis willingly, because remember, they do not think that there is anything wrong with them. So what we're left with is a situation where we have to make decisions about our own lives and about relationships we have. And we do that with the information we have at hand and use our best judgment and discernment in relation to deciding if the individual you were with was very narcissistic or probably or possibly an, a full-blown narcissist. That will enable you to understand whether the relationship was also toxic or not and make your decisions going forward. So let's get into the topic at hand. Why you should not, or it is not advisable for a lot of good reasons to call out a narcissist and tell them you know who they are, much as, you know, with those light bulb moments going off, much as you'd absolutely love to, because this is your freedom, your re a revelation for you and a way to work your life forward with this gift of knowledge, life-saving in a lot of cases, knowledge that you have received about the person that you were in a toxic relationship with or are in a toxic relationship with. So basically, that's the point you're at. You know, you know, and the narcissist is somewhat still in your life. And you are so tempted to go up and say, I know what you are. I know what you are. I know what you've been doing to me. I know you're a narcissist. Let's look at what would, why would you want to tell the narcissist besides what we all know that it's just, you just want to express it and spit it out at them after all they've done to you. Let's look at what would motivate you to do that or what you would hope to achieve by doing that. And then we look at what would it achieve by doing that. And then we look at the five other things you could do as an alternative to calling a narcissist out. So what would your calling a narcissist out achieve for you? What would be your motivation besides natural bursting out of frustration and anger at, at everything they've done? You may be looking for vindication by telling them what they are. You may look for clarity, closure or proper conversation with them. Or you may want to actually help them and say, look, you're a narcissist. We can do something about this once you accept and understand what you are. So you may be hoping for personal growth on their part, or you may be hoping to repair a relationship and have a healthy relationship there are, or anger or just pure wishing to get to the truth of the situation and cutting through all that narcissist gaslighting that they've done on you and all the things they've done to you and say, this is the truth of the situation and kind of reestablish your reality. So they may be some of the things that you would like to achieve by actually confronting and calling a narcissist out. In actual fact, what would be achieved by calling a narcissist out 
is threatening the narcissist's control, any criticism of them being in any way wrong will immediately put their back up, will immediately get them to go into black and white thinking, will immediately get them to start to gaslight you, probably for them to say that you're the narcissist, they've done nothing wrong, you have problems and you need to get out of here, or actually to physically attack you or to take measures in the background to destroy you even more than they have in the present circumstance. Narcissists cannot reflect. They cannot introspect. They cannot look at themselves as being wrong because that would be like that would be like a narcissist saying to you, go and kill that person and you're not going to feel bad about it. You would just say that's a fundamental first of all you wouldn't kill the person and secondly of course you would feel bad about it. The narcissist that's the narcissist trying to get you to accept their truth and put that on you. So the same would be for you to say to the narcissist, they're a narcissist and they can get help. That is how oppositional their position would be to you looking for them to personally grow from the information that they're a narcissist. So I hope that clarifies and clears that up they would immediately have to go into defense mode because you are threatening their whole existence, the whole their whole way of existing in the world. Uh, just like if they'd said that to you and told you you had to go and do that, you would fight back and say, absolutely no way, mate. Am I going to kill anybody or think that, that that would be OK or that I'd feel OK about it? So if they were then forcing you or trying to put a lot of pressure on you to go and kill someone, well, you would do something about it. Well, the narcissist being the narcissist would more than go against you. They will actually attack you for you trying to help them or being angry at them and saying they're a narcissist. So it would not go well. It would not achieve anything that you had set out to achieve by your conversation other than conflict and anger. So that is what you would get back. You may, you may be able to offload momentarily some of your anger, but even that would be feeding the narcissist because that would be narcissistic supply to them, even though it's challenging them. You're actually saying to them that they matter to you, that you believe that they're a person, you believe that there's something worthwhile there, and you're engaging with them, making them feel empowered and important. So it's pure narcissistic supply. It's a chaotic, toxic situation. And it's something that they would ultimately gain from you calling them out. And they would gain in more ways than that because, and I'm going to get on to the five things you can do instead. And one starts with making a decision not to call the narcissist out as being the one thing you can do instead of calling a narcissist out and arguing and fighting with them. That knowledge that you have received, that clarity about who you are dealing with is treasure. Knowledge is power. So you essentially going up to the narcissist and telling them who they are is giving all that power away the narcissist approached you with knowledge and power that they were being deceptive, that they that you didn't know who they were. And that was their power. That was ultimately and is ultimately the only power they have over you is your is the deception of you and confusing reality and deceiving you about reality. So when you know that that person's a narcissist, you're on an equal footing in relation to a power struggle. In fact, you're going above them in relation to the knowledge that you have and the powerful position you're in, knowing they're a narcissist and them not knowing that you know they're a narcissist, if that makes sense. So the first decision and the first most powerful decision is if you decide not to tell the narcissist that they know, you have leverage and you have ammunition going forward. The second thing to do is, do you make a decision as to whether you're going to maintain the relationship with this person or whether you're going to close it down? 
So whether you're going to go no contact or whether you're going to stay in the relationship or maybe it's a family member or uh, someone in the workplace and you now know who they are. So there are things you can do to alleviate the stress of the relationship, minimize the damage to yourself and perhaps work the relationship to a satisfactory level with intermittent contact if it's a situation that you're not actually living with a narcissist or if you need to stay with a narcissist for a certain length of time because you need to put things in place so that you don't leave the relationship destitute with no way forward financially etc that's a decision you can make at this stage so these are two things you can do. They may seem very obvious and simple, but they're two steps you can take. One, decide whether you tell them you know or not. And two, decide whether you're going to stay, whether you're going to go. And if you do stay, how you're going to manage the situation. Number three. Number three, the third thing you can do is to fully embed yourself with the knowledge that they are a narcissist. They are always going to think differently. They cannot be changed. The only thing that can change is the way you deal with them, the way you interact with them. That having made the decision, if you do want to stay, that you need to really understand and get that into you, those points and kind of radically accept who they are, radically accept that they're not going to change and radically get rid of the toxic hope that they are normal and that they're capable of personal growth. So that's the third thing you can do in relation to you not being triggered by the narcissist in an interpersonal relationship with them and to understand that you can implement things like grey rock, that you can learn to control your emotions and not take what they say personally. Now, this is, this is a discipline. This is an intellectual and emotional and psychological discipline that will certainly help your personal growth if you decide that you want to continue interacting with maybe a familial member um, a, f a member of your family or a friend or someone in the workplace that it would, in your opinion, be more beneficial to stay in touch with, but to change the dynamic of the actual relationship itself. So, yeah, so going forward, this is a it's it's like a, a course nearly that you could go on. It's a work of art if you can manage to manage a narcissist remembering who they are, remembering who you are and keeping that balance in place when they try and trigger you. You don't get triggered. You maybe talk about things that are of a non-triggering nature. You don't overshare information with them. You don't look for praise and admiration from them. You don't give them any opportunity to belittle you or put you down. You keep things general you ask them about themselves. This may seem like a kind of a, a false relationship, but the relationship with the narcissist was always false prior to this. This is you managing to be as authentic in a false situation as you possibly can while giving them compassion, care or concern that you feel you would like to give, but in a safe way. So Remember, guys, I'm not advocating staying with a narcissist. I'm not advocating anything here other than you have the knowledge to make your own personal decision and choice about how you want to maintain relationships or not maintain relationships going forward in your life with the knowledge of what you're dealing with. So the fourth thing is to get support from outside, not from people who are going to tell you that it's not really nice you, you know, being like this with maybe your parent or your brother or sister or telling me that there's something wrong with them. That's not a very nice thing to say. Or what did you say? They were a narcissist. 
don't go there with people that don't understand. It's more damaging to you and it's damaging to a relationship that you might want to maintain with somebody who is narcissistic, etc. Get the support, whether it's coaching, whether it's just here on YouTube in this community where you have a, an opportunity to vent about the unfairness, the nastiness, etc., etc., and clear it out of your system so that you are better able to maintain your equilibrium while dealing with a person you choose to deal with or stay with or who is in your life that you would be detrimental to get away from, i.e. somebody in work that you just can't leave that situation, etc., etc. I think you know what I mean and where I'm coming from. So that's personal support for your personal growth and your personal coping with a situation until such a time as you can extract yourself safely from it or whether you wish to stay. So the fifth one is, as I said in, in previous podcasts, where there is a gap, the narcissist can do damage, where you were with the narcissist to fulfill a certain degree your own personal happiness not leaving a gap there is going to protect you by filling yourself up with ways that you can personally make yourself happy without getting that input from another person and becoming reliant on it, which is essentially what the narcissist will groom you to do in a relationship. So whether it's a parent, a boss, a child, a partner, where you would have rushed to tell them all the good things that happened to you and they would say, well, that's not all that. Or they will just criticize you for the sake of criticizing you, something that you're feeling vulnerable about, and then praise you up in other ways when they're feeling or having a good day and it, it comes naturally to them. So they want to make you feel good and they want to manipulate you into doing something for them. Basically, Empower yourself with your own sense of who you are, a strong sense of who you are, a realistic sense of who you are, but a good sense. Praising yourself for the good in you so that no one holding that, holding that as a, a pillar within you so that even if somebody does say to you, you're crap at this, you're crap at that, you know that that's their issue, that's their opinion and that's their problem if they want to bring that negativity towards you, it's not of you, it belongs to them. So basically work on filling that gap and building into yourself a solid sense of who you are and maintaining your balance and your own happiness in what you're doing in your life and progress forward. Don't get into that rut. When we get into a rut of just surviving and just going along with stuff, Sometimes we need to do that, particularly when we're getting over a lot of pain and narcissistic cruelty, but we can't stay like that or we are vulnerable to these predators coming in and tempting us with a quick fix to happiness. And that's where a lot of people get caught by narcissists when they are lonely, when they are lacking something in their life. And they're not putting enough effort into their life when they are in a position where they could do so. I hope that makes sense, guys. And I will see you again shortly. Take great care of yourselves. As always, if you're in a very down position, it will not last. Do whatever you can today, whatever small step you can, even if it's making yourself a nice meal, even if it's getting out of bed and having a shower and sitting all day and doing nothing, do that one thing for yourself and add to it the next day and the next day. And I promise you, this pain will not last. It is not going to last. On that note, I will leave you. Uh, God bless.